Is it permissible for a Muslim to eat the mutton or chicken in a Western country from McDonald's, KFC or any other non-Muslim fast food chains or non-Muslim restaurants, assuming that these non-Muslims are Christians but do not slaughter the animals as per the Islamic method of Zabiha, is the mutton and chicken served here halal for the Muslims? And I'm aware that the Muslims living in the Western country, whether it be USA, Canada, UK or the European countries, normally have an argument, something, allowed something, not allowed. And there's different opinion. If you ask an Arab regarding this question, so he will tell you that Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, Verse number five, that lawful for you are all food which are pure and halal. And lawful for you are also the food of the Ahli Kitab. And your food is lawful for them. So based on this verse of the Quran, they give the opinion that the food is permissible. And they also say that once the Prophet, peace be upon him, when uh, and the, the hadith quoted in Bukhari, Hazrat Aisha may Allah be pleased with her, that she reported that once some of the Sahabas came to the Prophet and said that we don't know whether this meat given by the Ahli Kitab is the name of Allah is taken or not, whether it's pure or not. So the Prophet said, have Bismillah and have it. Say Bismillah and have it. Based on this, they say that you can have the food from the Christian fast food chain whether it be McDonald's, KFC, whether it be Burger King or the mainly the Christian restaurants in the non-Muslim country, even if they're not Zabiha, you don't have to worry, just say Bismillah and have it. But the same question if you ask to the Muslim scholars of the Indian subcontinent, whether they be from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh or the Hanafi school of thought, they will say that this verse of Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 5, does clearly mention that lawful for you are food which are pure and halal, and lawful for you are food of the Heli Kitab, and your food is lawful for them. But this does not mean that if they give you food which is not slaughtered according to the Islamic method, it is allowed. Because we have to have food which is slaughtered according to the Islamic method. If you know that these, and we know very well today, that most of these Christian joints, whether it be McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, they don't slaughter the Islamic method. So we have to not have, and this meat or chicken is not halal for you. The difference of opinion. I personally believe in the view which is given by the Muslims of the Indian subcontinent or the scholars of the Indian subcontinent, including the Hanafi school of thought. Because if you read the fatwa of Sheikh bin Baz and the humble school of thought, in detail it clearly says that if you, ha if you know very well that the mutton or the chicken or the meat that you're having is slaughtered as per the Islamic method, then you can have it, irrespective of who serves it. And if you know that the meat, the chicken, the mutton, is not slaughtered as per the Islamic method, you should not have it, irrespective of whoever gives you. But if you do not know whether they slaughtered the Islamic way or not, and then if a Christian gives you, then as the hadith of the Prophet says that if you don't know, say Bismillah and have it. So Sheikh Bin Bas, may Allah be pleased with him, may Allah have mercy on him. Sheikh Bin Bas clearly said that if you know that the food, that, that the meat, whether chicken or mutton or beef is slaughtered as per the Islamic method of Zabiya, then you can have it. But if you know that the meat is not slaughtered, slaughtered as per the Islamic method, and if it may be slaughtered maybe by electrocution or by stunning or by putting the animal in the water, that will be dead meat, so it is not permitted. If you don't know and if a Hele Kitab serves you, then it is permissible. So, I basically agree with the fatwa of, of uh, Sheikh bin Baz 
But let me tell to the audience that today it is a well-known fact that in the non-Muslim countries, if the owners are even Christian, whether it be McDonald's, whether it be KFC, whether it be Burger King, they are not slaughtered as per the Islamic method. The name of Allah is not taken. So surely, according to Sheikh bin Bas Fatwa, it is not permitted. You cannot say, I don't know. And that is the reason, say, Bismillah and have it. And we know the hadith. That if you ask an Arab, the hadith of the Prophet, that when he went to eat food in the house of a Jew, he did not question, he just had it. What you have to realize, that the Jews of today, if they are Orthodox Jew, they the meat is called as kosher meat. And this is similar to the Zawiha. So if you go to a Jewish shop, and if we know that the Jew is an Orthodox Jew, who follows the teachings of the Torah, then I agree with you that you can have the meat because it is as per the Islamic principles, and it follows the rules of Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 5, that lawful for you are the food of the Halikita. Now, once while I have, when I was having an argument with an Arab and asked him that why are you making a blanket rule that whatever food the Heli Kitab serves you, you can have it. He said, yes, that's what the Quran says, that's what the Hadith says. So I asked him the question that if the Heli Kitab serves you pork, will you have it? He said, no, not at all. And there's unanimous consensus that if the Heli Kitab, whether a Jew or a Christian, serves you pork, you will not have it. And we know very well that the Jew will not serve you pork because the Jews believe that the pork is prohibited. But the Christian, he believes it's allowed. But if he serves you pork, will you have it? All of them agree. Even the Arabs call, no, you can't have it. And you ask them, why are they double standard? He said, no, because it's clearly mentioned in the Quran that pork is haram. And I agree with him. No less than four different places. In Surah Maida, chapter number verse number 3. In Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 173. In Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse number 145. And Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 115. Allah clearly mentions, Hurrimat alaykumul maytutu waddamu wa lamul kinzeer wa ma ohilla li gair illa bi that forbidden for you for food are dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine and any food on which any name besides Allah they mistaken. And I agree with him. Then ask the next question. That if the Ahli Kitab serves with alcohol, will you have it? He says, no. He said, why? Because the Quran says, and I agree with him, Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, Ya ayu alladhin amnu, innam al khamru al maisuru. Oh, you believe, most certainly intoxicated in gambling, wal anzabu al aslamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rish to minam ili shaitan. These are Satan's handiwork. First, then you will look to flee on. Abstain from it so that you may prosper. So I agree with them that because the Quran is very clear cut saying that you can't have pork, even if the Ahli Kitab serves you pork, you should not have. The Quran is very clear cut that you cannot have intoxicants. So if the Ahli Kitab serves you intoxicants, you don't have it. Then ask them the question, what if they serve you non zabia food? Why are you having it? No, because the Prophet had it. I said, the Hadith says, and the Hadith is saying, the Prophet went to the Jew, and the Jews, they do kosher meat, and they slaughter the same method as per the Islamic Sharia. So it's permissible. Quran clearly mentions in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 118, that eat of the meat on which Allah's name is taken. Furthermore, the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 121, that eat not of the meat on which any name besides Allah's name is. Eat not of the meat on which Allah's name is not taken. So here the Quran is very clear cut that if the meat, whether it be mutton, beef or chicken, if Allah's name is not taken, it is prohibited for you to have. Here you will not give the excuse that because it's food of Ali Kitab, you can have it. When, when Allah says you can have the food of the Ali Kitab, it is agreed that it should be a lawful food. It should not be alcohol, it should not be pork, it should not be non zabiha So I agree with the fatwa of the Indian subcontinent scholars, whether it be India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and even of Sheikh Bing Bas. And even the Arab scholars, really if you ask them, they give this fatwa that if you know that the food is not slaughtered as per the Islamic method, it is haram for you. These, some of them may just skip that part and say, okay, fine, when you go to McDonald's, don't this question, it's Ali Kitab, have it. According to the fatwa even of the humble school of thought, if you know that the food is not slaughtered as per the Islamic method. And if someone is so naive and saying, I don't want to inquire, I'll not check and I'll have it, this is illogical. And we know today that almost all 
of the Christian, Christian fast food centers in the non-Muslim countries. I'm not talking Muslim countries. In Muslim countries, whether it be Malaysia, whether it be, uh, no, whether it be Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, of course, they're Muslim countries and it's compulsory for the thing to be halal. And in, and in Malaysia, of course, there are non-Muslims staying, but the halal sign is very clear. And if they don't slot it, mention they're non-halal. So, if it's halal, no problem. But in the non-Muslim countries, whether it be Europe, European countries, whether it be America, it's very clear cut that almost all of the Christians owning the fast food center, whether it be McDonald's, whether it be Burger King, whether it be KFC, if you have a Muslim owning these franchise, and if they get from a halal source, slaughtered by the Muslim, and if they put up a sign, halal, okay, you can have it. Here we are discussing the non-Muslim fast food chain or non-Muslim restaurants. So I agree with the fatwa of Sheikh bin Baz, and we know very well that it is, we know it is not slaughtered according to the Islamic way. So the general ruling of the Hanafi school of thought, I agree with that, because the Quran clearly prohibits eating non sabia food or eating the food on which Allah's name is not from. Allah's name is not pronounced. Furthermore, some people may argue that see, because if you go in the comparative religion, that you should have the lawful food of the Heli Kitab. And the lawful food, according to the Christian, also is that they should not have pork. So you don't have pork. Why? Because the Bible says not to have pork, and the Christian is supposed to follow the complete Bible, not only parts of the Bible. And it's clearly mentioned in many places. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. As well as the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, that should not have pork. So if the Bible says don't have pork, and if the Christian is serving you pork, you should not have. The Bible also says in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, and in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, that you should not have wine, that you should not have alcohol. So that means the Christians aren't supposed to drink alcohol. But yet if they're drinking, it's their fault. So these Christians are not following the Bible. If they serve you alcohol, you can't have it. Similarly, even the Bible says that you cannot have dead meat. And the Bible says that you cannot have blood. If you don't slaughter the Islamic method, there's going to be, there's going to be blood in the meat, in the mutton, in the chicken. It's clearly mentioned in the book of Genesis, in the Bible, chapter number 9, verse number 4. In the book of Leviticus, chapter number 17, verse number 14. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 12, verse number 16. In the first Samuel, chapter number 14, verse number 33. As well as the book of Acts, chapter number 15, verse number 29, that you cannot have blood. It's also mentioned in the Bible that you should not have food on which any name besides God's name is taken. Any name besides Allah's name is taken. It's mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 15, verse number 29, as well as the book of Revelations, chapter number 2, verse number 14. So I, being a student of comparative religion, I agree with the view that the more authentic and the more correct view is that given by the Hanafi school of thought or given by the scholars of the Indian subcontinent. I know that, that if you if you go to the Western country, we know majority of the Muslims living in, in America or UK or, or European countries, they are a large percentage or maybe majority also, they are from the Indian subcontinent, whether from India, the Pakistan or whether from Bangladesh. That is the reason you find that most of the people from the big Islamic organization, whether it be Sna, whether it be Bikana, the presidents uh, from the Indian subcontinent, whether Indian origin, Pakistan origin, or Bangladeshi origin, whether you go to UK, you have the East London Mosque. So, all of these from the Indian subcontinent, they, they agree with the view and they do not have food from the McDonald's or from the Burger King or from the KFC, which are owned by al Kitab, by Christians, but according to them, it is haram for the Muslims to have it. And I agree with this view and I believe this view is more strong and more authentic. And and the view of those Arab scholars who say that just take the name, just say Bismillah, because the Prophet had it. You have to realize that the, the, the hadith is authentic, but the Prophet had from a Jew. So even today, if you have from a Jewish shop or from a Jewish restaurant, if it is Orthodox Jew, they yet believe in kosher meat. And I remember that when I used to travel in the airlines in the 80s or the 90s, there was no halal food. 
so we either had to order vegetarian food or kosher food of the Jews. If you say kosher, we know that it is permissible for the Muslims to have it. Because the Jews, though they are less in number as come to the Muslims, they are a very small minority, yet they have got more power, they are more organized. So food in the airlines, the kosher food, the Jewish method of slaughtering is there much before the Muslims started halal food. Maybe in the 2000, maybe 2005 or 6, somewhere close to that, the Muslim airline started halal food. And the first country that started promoting halal food on the airlines was the Malaysian airline. And as I said earlier, that one of the country, one of the Muslim country which is the strongest in halal certification is Malaysia. So they, in 2004 or 2005, 6, somewhere close to that, they started promoting that Malaysian airline serves halal food. And then the other airlines followed. And now, most of the Muslim country, almost all, they have halal food. It, we, we don't have to ask. It's understood it's halal. And Alhamdulillah, today, in most of the airlines, even those owned by non-Muslims, you, a Muslim, can request for halal food. So if you are traveling in a European airlines, or an American airlines, almost all the airlines, they have halal food. And there are very few airlines that serve pork. Because most of them know that pork is not eaten by the Muslims. So most of the airlines don't pork, uh, don't serve pork. There are a few airlines which do serve from the Western country. There are very few. But even in those airlines, if you ask for halal food, it will be certified as per the Islamic Sharia. So if that is the case, then why should you have halal food in the airlines? Have from the Hale Kitab. So I disagree with the view, I strongly disagree with the view that you go to any Christian restaurant or a Christian McDonald's in the Western country and just say Bismillah have it. This is not the view of the Quran or the Sahih Hadith and neither the view of Shaykh bin Baz and the correct authentic scholars. Hope that answers the question.